All right, let's get started tonight early, seven seconds early. That's, we're going to set a record here. 680, 680 is our first song for the evening. All three stanzas rejoice in the Lord. God never moves without purpose or plan. All right, 680. Let's stand. God never moves without purpose or plan when trying his servant and molding a man. Give thanks to the Lord, though your testing seems long. Darkness giveth a song. Rejoice in the Lord. singing. You may be seated. Well, welcome this evening to Tri-City Baptist Church. It's good to see each of you this night as we join together. It's been a wonderful day this morning already. Our time of fellowship, our time of worship in the ABF and the, and the morning service. And now as we join together tonight, looking forward to uh, hearing about the mission trip that our Rooted Teens were just on. And uh, so really looking forward to that. It's always a blessing uh, to hear the follow-up of these various mission trips and activities. Let me welcome you who are online tonight, joining us via live stream, and uh, say thank you. Thank you for being with us tonight. I have just a few announcements. Uh, this coming Saturday is the Anna's Hope Luncheon. That will be at 1030 a.m. That is a ministry for our widows. And so if you've not, if you are widowed uh, and have not participated in Anna's Hope, feel free to call the office. We can give you more information regarding that, put you in touch with those who are leading that. Uh, but it will be a luncheon and fellowship this coming Saturday. They always do a, a tremendous job preparing for this, so I'd encourage you to be a part of it. And then as far as church membership and baptism, we've set several Sundays aside towards the uh, end of August here and then going into September. So on August the 28th, if you need to follow the Lord and Believer's Baptism, Immersion, uh, we have a service scheduled. Please contact one of the pastors or the church office. Let us know. 
would like to make contact with you, um, just talk to you about your need of baptism, and then uh, walk you through the process that, that uh, will occur on that particular Sunday and membership opportunities. Uh, September the 4th is uh, Labor Day weekend, and uh, so we know some folks may be away, but we do have some folks that desire to join and to accommodate those that are away. We're making two Sundays available, so September the 11th and September the 4th are opportunities to join Tri-City Baptist Church. Once again, we'd ask that you would reach out to a pastor or the church office, let us know, and again, we'll contact you regarding uh, these opportunities. And then as we rapidly approach the fall, uh, we have a number of ministries that will be kicking back in. One of them, one important ministry is our Wednesday night ministry of Awana, the Awana Clubs. Uh, it will require a number of volunteers. I haven't taken a, a, a look at the list, but there is a list out at the Welcome Center where you can sign up. Uh, you don't have to be um, so skilled at teaching. What you have to be is a person who loves to minister to children and loves to assist others. If you are not that lead person, that's fine. We need folks to listen to verses. We need folks to help keep the children going from one place to another, um, the various activities that they're engaged in. So it takes a lot of, a lot of folks to make this happen. It is a tremendous, tremendous opportunity to serve the Lord. I'd encourage you to sign up. If you have questions, please reach out to Pastor Brian Malik, and he can answer all of the questions for you. Now, for you who are volunteering, there is training scheduled for Wednesday, August the 31st. So that's coming up at the end of the month. Take note of that. And then online, if you have children or grandchildren or others in the, your, in the community who would uh, you'd like to see encouraged to register, online registration is available. Just go to the church website on the homepage, click Awana, it'll take you right to the registration page. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer as we uh, continue with our service of worship tonight. Father, we thank you that you make no mistakes, that you sent your son to die for our sins, to provide a way of eternal life through the washing away of our sins, if we but place our faith in you. And I thank you that many of us tonight here have done so. But possibly there's someone who is not, and the Lord is dealing with your heart. Holy Spirit is challenging you about your salvation. And we'd ask that you would, uh, we pray, Father, that as you work in these hearts, that they would yield to you. Uh, Father, what a blessing it is to hear from our teens tonight and sponsors that were a part of this trip of the work that you did, uh, the ministry and service that they provided, the impact on their lives and on the lives of others. This is what it's about. This is what the Christian life is, to glorify you, to exalt you, to edify the body of believers and to evangelize the lost. And we thank you for these many opportunities that you give us. I thank you for uh, these teens that we'll hear from tonight, and I ask that you would just bless them and minister in their hearts in, in, in the days to come as a result of this trip. But bless us as we come before you this night. May our hearts be tuned to you, that we would tune out the world, uh, that we would focus on you and what you would have for us and any challenges that you would have for our lives, challenges of change to become more Christ-like. That certainly is our desire. As our hope resides in you, we look for Christ's return, and may you find us faithful servants, busy about your business. I bless this time that we have. In Christ's name I pray, amen. All right, our next hymn is number 584, and before we start, we're going to have a little bit of a music lesson here. Um, if you look at the first score... One, two, three, fourth measure down in the music, number 584, there is a little circle. It looks like a little sunrise coming up above the music. That's a fermata, okay? And that means we hold it with the director. Now, I know you guys, you guys know your staff members, but I don't think this is a very little known fact. 
And that is that Brother Nathan loves Fermatus. He loves Fermatus. In fact, he loves Fermatus so much, I almost had him come up here and sing the song. Right? No, I'm just kidding. He, he doesn't like Fermatus at all. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, but what we're going to have to do, and the challenge of a Fermatus when you're leading the song, when you hold, you, the challenge is bringing everybody back in at the same time. Otherwise, you get people coming in all that. So we're going to practice. We're going to do this and see if we can all stay together, right? All our instrumentalists right through to the end, and I will try to bring us all back in. So 584, this is our last chance to stand. So let's sing. If Christ return it. <clears throat> It may be at dawn when the dawn is awakening. Oh, there you go. When sunlight, darkness and shadow is breaking again, that Jesus will come in the fullness of glory to receive from the world his own. second verse it may be day it may be at twilight hold it may be genuinely say good singing tonight you may be seated it is good to be back in Colorado uh, we had a wonderful time on the team mission trip um, probably uh, one of the most uncomfortable times from a weather perspective is when we drove down into Phoenix. And we got out at an In-N-Out burger. We had been planning to stop at In-N-Out because uh, we enjoy In-N-Out. And all of a sudden, it was like we got hit with uh, something weather. With it was, it was high temperatures, and it was humid, actually, because of all the thunderstorms they've been having. And uh, we were there last just for one night. And then uh, we drove up into the mountains above on the Mogollon Rim, uh, almost to New Mexico, so about four hours from Phoenix. And we were at 8,300 feet is where the camp was located, and it felt like Colorado. So it was just so wonderful. Um, all the work that we got to do, we, we were able to do it in temperatures that were uh, semi-normal for us, and uh, we thank the Lord for that blessing. So um, tonight we are going to share... Um, our rooted uh, mission trip uh, update and report, and we want all the glory to go to the Lord. Um, he really did bless this trip, and we want um, our comments to reflect that. Um, the kind of the, the process here is um, I'm going to give an overview. I'm going to read uh, a testimony from one of our team members and share some slides, 
And um, then we're gonna have an opportunity for each one of the members who's able to be here this evening, two of our team members are not able to be here and um, to give testimonies. And then after that, we'll sing. And then if there's any time left, um, I'll share something from the, the verses we memorized uh, for our mission team. Let's pray and ask the Lord's blessing. Father, we thank you for answered prayer. You answered our prayers for this to be a mission trip, which we believe was glorifying to you. We know we're not perfect. We thank you, Father, that you use imperfect people. We thank you that you forgive us. We thank you that you fill us, Lord, and use us for your glory. Father, we pray that tonight you would be honored, that the name of Jesus Christ would be exalted, that he would be glorified, that he would be lifted up. Lord, if there's anyone in this service that doesn't know Christ, Lord, would you draw them to you um, this evening? And we ask for him to be exalted in Christ's name. Amen. We had 15 team members, four adults. Uh, my wife, Janelle, and I, uh, in addition to Wade and Kelly Whiteley, so thankful for their involvement. Wade is on the board there at Grandview. Um, and they were just a real encouragement to us. Not only did Wade do the lion's share of the driving, I drove just a, a little section out of up into the mountains. And then from there, Wade took over. And uh, he was our power driver, and Kelly kept him uh, on point there, and really just a blessing, not only the driving, but um, the fellowship. They were working right alongside us and uh, at the meals, just really enjoyed their friendship and their encouragement. And I want to thank them for giving up a week to go and minister with our team. Uh, we had 11 teens who were part of the team, five guys, Isaiah, Josiah, Noah, OJ, and Philip. And we had seven girls, Brooklyn, Esther, Iana, Isabel, Lindsay, Morgan, and let's see here. I think I have somebody in there twice. Who am I missing? I think I missed anybody. I think I wrote, I have somebody's name down twice. There we go. Six. Yeah, seven and five makes 12, not 11. There we go. Okay. So uh, we, if we're not missing, uh, we do have an extra name there. Okay. Um, the objectives for our trip. We wanted to complete work projects at Grandview Camp in Eager, Arizona, and we want to expose our teens to the ministry of International Baptist College and Seminary there in Phoenix. Um, pastor teaches on the adjunct faculty. Um, I'm in their distance uh, grad program, and we really, our, our goal was to disciple these older teens in our youth group to lead the youth group, to have this be a mentoring time and a discipleship time more than the work that we would accomplish, and I'm thankful for the work that got done, but what the work that we wanted God to do in us, that was our prayer. Uh, in order to prepare for this trip, um, they did have to raise uh, $250 for their expenses. They had to memorize Ephesians chapter four. They had to complete 100 pages of daily devotionals in Ephesians with 210 personal journaling questions. So um, there was work being done before we ever got in the van to leave for Arizona. And I want to commend these teenagers for their faithfulness in, in, in those expectations. We also had several obstacles. Um, it was hard to figure out what we were going to do for the mission trip at first. We tried to go back to Montana. We went to Montana in uh, 2018 to our missionaries, Larry and Carol Bunyan uh, on the Blackfeet Indian Reservation. And because of COVID still lingering on the reservation and, and the requirements, that wasn't going to work. And they said, this is not the year. We, we talked about an idea of going east. Um, but really, as Pastor said this morning, our heart and desire is to do mission trips in the West to support uh, ministries here. Um, we looked at a church plant opportunity in Reno that is going on, and uh, we're trying to figure out the scheduling of that. And just with, with the church schedule and, and my schedule and everything, it wasn't working. And Lord, where do you want us to go for a mission trip? And then the Lord opened up the door to go to Grandview to do a work project. Um, because uh, we typically go to Camp Grace for our summer camp, this was a unique opportunity for our teens to see Grandview and to do it as part of a mission trip. So that was kind of the first obstacle. The second obstacle is um, one of our teens, Iana Harrison, was playing volleyball uh, just a couple of weeks before the trip. And she was, she was jumping, you know, she is a volleyball player. She has a scholarship to play volleyball and she came down and several things happened to her knee. And so she had to go into surgery 
And she is still um, in recovery from that. In a moment, I'll read her testimony. But that was an obstacle because that's, that's a very discouraging thing for her. Um, you know, it's easy for, for those of you who um, have experienced something like that to say, oh, I remember I, I went through that. But, you know, as a teenager, when you're going through that for the first time, and when so much of the future that you've been looking forward to, you know, you, this is how your scholarship works at, at, at school, um, really, this is a very difficult trial for her. And also a potential discouragement for our team because Iana, Iana is a leader in our youth group and for her not to be able to go is, was a disappointment. Um, and of course, we were, um, we were grieving with her in, in her uh, trial. Also, right before the trip, um, we, once again, our family got COVID. So I did not get COVID, but my wife had COVID. And the question was, okay, I had it back in June. I should be good, right? But there are all these different strains and there's a chance that she would not be able to go. I would not, what if I got it? What if this cancels the trip? Our son got it. Fortunately, um, she was cleared before we left and I did not get it. But that was again, another obstacle that potentially um, could have kept us from going to the trip. Um, we drove out of the church parking lot and it was only a few hours later, we were actually singing as we were singing I Go along Life Road, we were singing in the van, and I, I asked, can we turn up the AC? And just at that moment, um, I was hesitant to ever say that again, uh, all of a sudden the tire blew, the right rear tire on the church van while we were going 65 miles an hour down the road or whatever and pulling the trailer. And the Lord protected us. Um, Wade was able to very smoothly pull us off the side of the road, and you'll see pictures of that. But that was an, an obstacle of suddenly, you know, we're on, a, we're on a schedule. I love my mission team schedule. And all of a sudden, you know, this is in jeopardy, and, and we have to go to, you know, uh, whatever plan. Um, the first night that we got to where we were staying, we finally got there um, for Wade and uh, two of our other guys, OJ and Philip. They didn't have AC in their hotel room. So, you know, you're now down in Arizona, and the and it didn't get fixed until 2 a.m. So, um, you know, these are just obstacles of, of, of how this is going. And then once we finally got on the trip, um, we were down in, uh, in Arizona, in Phoenix, and one of our team members, Morgan, um, we were playing soccer, and um, she fell, and we needed to end up going and getting stitches, and also getting her arm in a, in a sling, and that, that altered her trip. And so... You know, all of these things are happening, and these can be things that, you know, we look at and we, it's, 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 you know, we could be discouraged from serving the Lord, or we could call out to the Lord and say, Lord, in our weakness, would you continue to work? Would you give us the grace that we need? And, um, you know, it's been said, if there's so much opposition, perhaps this is, you know, Satan's opposing us. We've been praying throughout the summer, Lord, would you do a work in our youth group? Would you send revival to our youth group? And when you use this mission trip to do a work in our older teens that would then impact our youth group. And so this is where we want the, it to go. And these are all the problems. And yet God was obviously at work. So it really was an answer. We saw many answers to prayer just for safety. Um, I think the, the discipleship piece, um, I wish you could have heard the testimonies around the fire Sunday night. Um, you're going to hear testimonies tonight. Um, we had a good testimony before the camp. I, I didn't fully anticipate the encouragement that we would be. You expect people to say, hey, thank you so much for coming. It was really a blessing to have your group, unless you just like tore the camp apart and, you know, did something terrible. You'd expect them to say something nice, right? But really their, their, their appreciation was, uh, was above what we were anticipating. And I'll read um, a statement in just a moment. Um, for myself, uh, the verses from Ephesians 4 that kept coming to mind all week long, Ephesians 4, 1 through 2, therefore the prisoner of the Lord, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. Um, I try to prepare our teens. This is how the mindset we need to have on mission team. And then I get into the mission trip and I realize that I'm struggling to keep that mindset, right? Um, I want them to bear with one another in love. And, and do all this. And all of a sudden, I'm struggling to bear with one another in love. And uh, it just was a, a, a good learning experience for me about needing to be filled with the Spirit um, and needing to rest in the Lord and, and bearing with one another in love. I want you to know our teens did a fabulous job. It was such a blessing to be with them on this trip. Um, we had probably had way too much fun at times, uh, but it was, uh, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. 
Let me just read some uh, comments from the camp there. Um, the director, Matt Wilson, um, who is actually married one of the girls from uh, Rachel Campbell, um, from Pastor Annalise's church there at University Baptist in Clemson. Matt was actually is actually in the Air Force chaplaincy, and so he was on not deployment, but he was he was on his weekend rotation for the month, and so he was not there. He was intending to be there, and he called me before we got there and said, "Hey, I'm sorry." Um, I won't be able to be there, but this is what he said. He said, thank you so much for your work and getting the team together, bringing him to Grandview. Joel, who was our project manager, um, and we want to give the glory to the Lord. This is what he said. He said, Joel has never praised a volunteer team as much as he did your group of teens. I know they were a huge encouragement to everyone, and I really appreciate leading them and serving. I'm sorry I could not be there, et cetera. This is what Joel said, and this is what I did not really anticipate. He said, I wanted to thank you once again for, to you and your wife and the Whiteleys for taking the time to bring your group all the way from Colorado to work at camp. This fall is going to be hard with all the construction going on, as well as all the churches that will be coming throughout the fall. We usually have more staff. This year, we've, we have less than we've ever had before. Your group was such an encouragement to me and the rest of the staff who are here. There's always more work than we can get done. As a staff, we rely on volunteers. But your group of high school students not only worked hard, they worked hard moving boulders and cleaning gross cabins for days with a sweet spirit. Their attitude while they were here was refreshing for me, and I know it was pleasing to God. I've never had a group of volunteers that was so God-focused. It was refreshing to hear, and he speaks of the team, in the middle of work, pray for the campers who would be coming and to uh, singing hymns while moving uh, huge rocks. It was very encouraging to be able to sit, he says, in on the last challenge in prayer time you had with your team Sunday night before you left. You have a great group of teenagers just being around them. You could tell that they were saturated in scripture, that they love God, they love each other. It was especially good to hear them, uh, kids so young, praying the way they did for each other with an eternal focus. One of my favorite parts was when you visited our church on Sunday morning, you all came and sang, you are good during uh, the song service, and that was encouraging, but maybe even more glorifying to God was the way that every one of your teams spread out throughout the church and talked with the members there with smiles on their faces, sharing the love of Christ and the joy of the Lord with everyone there. We will be more than happy to have you all back, and we don't tell everyone that. You all accomplished a lot of work in a short time, but more than that, you encouraged us, you pointed us to Christ, and refreshed our spirits while you were here. Thank you for all you did at camp. Um, that's the Lord. Isn't that the Lord? Um, if you remember Stephen White, in his uh, at the end of the summer, he had a message, and he talked about, okay, look at all we did this summer, right? And then he turned it on us and said, actually, it's what God did. This is an answer to prayer. And we were not even really anticipating, you know, we're, we're going to be this great encouragement to them. I, we wanted to get the work done and do a good job, but it was more, Lord, would you do a work in us? And yet we praise the Lord that their hearts were encouraged and they were so kind in their comments. Let me read to you uh, Iana Harrison's testimony. Um, this is the young lady graduating from our youth group, headed off uh, to Oklahoma to, uh, to go to school on a, on a volleyball scholarship. And she writes, life has been unpredictable this year. I started off not being able to go on the missions trip. I had an early move-in date for college due to my volleyball scholarship, and we didn't yet know the date for the trip. Once Pastor Stebbin confirmed the date, my parents didn't want me to go because I would be moving in at college five days after the trip. My move-in date got pushed back, and I was able to go. So I, talk, I talked everything out with Pastor Stebbin, and he said I could go on the trip. Throughout the summer, I kept forgetting to pay him, but turns out there was a reason for that. It wasn't intentional. It just happened, a little thing I found interesting due to my current circumstances. I remember during teen camp, the theme was God's providence and trusting God during trials. Little did I know that the moment I got back home, I would be tested. Sunday evening after camp, I went to play drop-in volleyball. I hadn't even warmed up. The moment I first jumped and landed, I knew the trajectory of the next month to a year had just changed. I was right. At that moment, I ruptured my ACL and tore my MCL and my MPFL. I wouldn't be walking for a while, yet let alone playing volleyball. My world was crushed, at least what I thought was my world. But I was immediately reminded of, of that week's lessons at camp and of Joseph. He had everything stripped from him. I may not have lost my home and my family, and I surely wasn't thrown into slavery, but I lost a lot that day. Every day has been a hard battle, and to say the least, I'm not perfect, but I know God isn't only growing me, but he's growing my testimony and the impact I could make in others' lives. Look at your life. Look at the worst thing that has happened to you, but don't think of how terrible it is. Does my situation cause complications for me and my family? Absolutely. Does it possibly affect the rest of my life? Yes, but there's lots of good coming from it. 
So look at your situation with humility and a gentle heart, learn from it, grow from it. Something my mom always says is that that has definitely stuck with me through the season of life is you can't run from the will of God. Are you God? Do you know what ultimately is best for you? The answer is a big fat no. And remember this verse is not, uh, remember this verse, not as a cliche, but as the word of God, Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose, his purpose, not ours, his. So what a wonderful testimony from Iana. And, um, you know, if you want to encourage her, I know our, our youth group is, is, has been visiting her, but please keep her in your prayers. Um, tomorrow, she has a meeting with the provost. Um, ironically, the provost back in the day actually had a knee injury when she was a freshman. Uh, but part of what she's telling Iana is, yeah, I was able to push through it or whatever. And her doctor is telling her, hey, you don't need to go to school until the end of September, but they're only wanting her to do Zoom classes for the first two weeks. So she's really caught in a, Lord, what, how are you going to work this out? So if you just pray, she meets with the provost tomorrow, and then on Thursday, she meets again with her surgeon. So let me show you some pictures, and then we'll have some testimonies first from our ladies and then from our young men. So this is the route, if you can kind of see that up on the screen. So up in the upper right-hand corner where it says United States, that is the red pin is Denver. Um, we drove, uh, it says 1824. We actually took a slightly different route. It was 1834. Um, and we drove to Kayenta, Arizona, which if I can get it to pop up here, maybe I can, maybe I can't. I think I have the laser here. So we drove from Denver and right about here, right outside of Rifle, the tire blew. And this was of the Lord, because what if those tires had blown in the no man's land of Utah or Northern Arizona, right? Because right at Rifle, literally we're close to the exit, uh, called pastor, pastor contacted the Blumenthal's, I think a family member Blumenthal, who had a friend who lived right there in Rifle, and he drove out and he was able to help us with the tire. And then also the, we needed a jump and he gave us a jump. And, you know, it's just the, the play, position, he, was, he was, lived right there. And just the blessing that God had us right there at that moment. Um, we were able to get four brand new tires put on in Grand Junction. So hopefully the van is not going to have those issues uh, anytime soon. Um, we were able to make our way down to Kayenta where we spent the night. And then the next day we visited Grand Canyon. Um, and then we went down to International Baptist College and Seminary. And then we went to the camp. So if you look at this, it's almost like a backward sea. We drove a long way to get here. But our goal was to visit the Grand Canyon and see God's creation prior to uh, those exhausting hours of work at the camp, okay? So here we are, uh, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Uh, the morning we're going to leave, and here we are. There is the tire, and we thank the Lord for his protection. Um, I also want to thank uh, two young men in particular, OJ and Philip. Uh, they figured out how to get this, uh, I had left the tire iron here at church, which is not a wise thing to do. Um, and they managed to get that tire off. And then the gentleman who was the friend of the Blumenthal's came and he had the iron that we needed um, and he had other things we needed. And But they really just jumped in there and got to work. I also wanna commend our, our team for having a good attitude. Here we are, we're going on this mission trip and suddenly we're out in the sun stuck on the side of the road and their smiles and uh, really, I appreciate their attitude throughout the trip. Getting those new tires put on in Grand Junction. Let's see if I can get it to advance. There we go. Oops, going back the wrong way. New tires there. Thankful for that. Here we are uh, the next day at the Grand Canyon. Uh, just amazing demonstration of, of God's uh, creation through the flood. Uh, the Colorado River actually would have to run for evolution says that, you know, the Colorado River basically carved out this Grand Canyon. The problem with that is that it would actually have to run uphill and take a 90 degree turn. And the water typically doesn't do that. Right. And so um, this is really the result of the water runoff from North America from the flood. And uh, we just marveled in God's uh, awesome power. And here we are with the pictures. Um, there are lots of pictures that we took. Um, the guy on the left is uh, Christopher Ending. He is the Dean of Students, I believe. Um, he has his earned uh, PhD um, and at, at International Baptist College and Seminary. Here we are hiking the Bright Angel Trail. Some of you might remember that if you've ever been on that trail. 
Um, I swiped this from the website because I didn't have a picture of Scott Olson. He is the uh, head of mentoring there at IBCS. Really was a joy. Um, he came up and uh, the two of them spent time with us at the Grand Canyon. Um, Scott's wife uh, has a disability and just to see his care for her, um, these are godly individuals and I was thankful for the time they had with us. We spent the night at International Baptist College and Seminary. Um, it was warm there. Uh, they tell us that it's really nice the rest of the year, okay, but it was warm in August. Um, this was the uh, this was uh, the fall that um, one of our team members, Morgan, experienced uh, as we were playing soccer, waiting there in the parking lot. Um, and Brooklyn, her sister, is getting her all bandaged up using her lifeguard skills. Um, the middle picture is there we are at, uh, at the um, facility where they were able to give her stitches and also give her a splint because they weren't able to tell at the time whether or not it was fractured. We did arrive at Grandview Camp, and uh, this is the lodge, beautiful, beautiful location, big porches, um, just a beautiful uh, camp place, come apart and uh, spend time with the Lord. Um, here, we are hard at work. Uh, it was great. We got to do our own dishes. So they provided our food. Uh, they did a great job with that, but we had the joy of getting to sweep and mop and uh, run the dishwash. And so um, there was a variety of, of, of people involved in different activities there. Here we are carrying rocks. Um, we needed to, they have an issue with, they got a lot of rain, the monsoon season. Um, kind of like we get those afternoon showers here in the summer. Um, but uh, they've had some fire damage there at the camp. Um, it didn't wipe out things as, as, poor, as much as Camp Grace. Uh, did, but because of some of that, there's an erosion issue, and they wanted us to um, basically provide a, a retaining wall area with some large boulders or some boulders we could carry, I should say, um, and so we were working on that, and I just want to uh, kind of zone in on or hone in on this guy over here on the right, Josiah, because you really need to see his expression. There he is. That is just pure hard work serving the Lord. Um, many times we were singing as we were trying to, you're, you're trying to, you know, the Lord's our rock, in him we hide. And you're trying to sing as you pant, you're at 8,300 feet elevation, and uh, just commend them for their hard work. Um, there was, this was the crew, we put them in the back of the truck, and these guys had to lift, had to transport them and then reposition uh, them. Um, here we are taking a group picture um, with the rocks. Here are all the rocks that we moved. It may not look like a lot, but actually that probably represented three days, maybe four days um, of moving rocks, probably for about somewhere um, near 10 to 12 hours total. Um, and uh, that where we're standing on that bank is going to be a new cabin or building. And so they're going to take these and they're carefully going to position them and build a retaining wall. So we were just the grunts. Um, here we have uh, Morgan working in the office with Becca, one of their staff members, and uh, cleaning. Here we have girls cleaning showers. Um, we're doing deep cleans of the cabins, and so we cleaned, I think, 13 of these cabins, which would sleep uh, about 10 individuals. I appreciate the cheerful attitude that everyone had. Here are some of the guys. They were uh, shaving these logs and uh, working hard at it out in the sun, and you'll see these logs all over camp in different places uh, as part of the uh, fixtures of the facility. Here we are moving log. This is the interior of their lodge as we ate our meals at a great time there. Here we are, you can't hardly see this. This is a panorama, but we're sitting in a circle. There is a game um, called Mafia and it, we, we played a Christianized version of that. So just for, in case you're wondering, but anyway, we had a, a blast uh, trying to trick each other and playing this game over and over again. This is one of those fellowship times. Um, here's an overlook of the camp. And so we enjoyed uh, just seeing God's creation there. Here is the church plant, Ponderosa uh, Bible Church, that Matt Wilson's father, Randy Wilson, pastors. Um, here we are Sunday morning singing as part of uh, their, their service. It was really neat to be there in that uh, old storefront that they're currently renting. Here we are at Petrified National Forest. Um, this is actually the Blue Canyon section. Um, on Sunday afternoon, we got to enjoy um, that aspect of God's creation. And uh, so a rainbow, a double rainbow traveling back. Every mission team presentation needs a sunset photo. So there you go. And here is our picture as we arrive back. 
So we want to thank the Lord for um, his, his work. And we also want to share with you, I, I was telling the students that when you look at the first missionary journey, Paul returns, Paul and Barnabas return, and it says they gathered the church together and they told them all the things that the Lord had done. So what we're telling you is really what God has done. And this is just an answer to prayer. Lord, thank you for answering prayer and allowing us to be a part of this mission team and of your service. So we'll have, let ladies come first. Morgan, why don't you come? We'll go on down the line and let the guys go. All right, so hi, everyone. I'm Morgan. And I'll just start off by saying that the week definitely did not go how I thought it would go, like just right off the bat. Clearly, this happened. That was fun. Um, turns out that I fractured the very tip of my radius bone. So that affects like my twisting movement. And then, as he said, six stitches in my right knee, as well as just cutting up my hands and my other knee. Um, I thankfully didn't really hit my head. The farthest it went was like my cheekbone, which was slightly bruised, but not bad. So I'm really thankful for that. Uh, my sister, Brooklyn, patched me up very well. She knew immediately what to do and like didn't hesitate. And she brought her own equipment for it. So she was very prepared. Um, thankfully nothing is hurting much anymore. And I just want to thank you all for your prayers up front. All right. The trip was very enjoyable nonetheless, even with all of that happening. And if I had to go through this again to go on a mission trip, I definitely would. I enjoyed playing pool with OJ, chess with Isabel, which we still need to finish, um, playing Pharisees, which was the mafia game he was talking about. And every time we played it, I think the round went an extra 30 minutes. It just seemed to keep going and going and going and going because we all got really good. Uh, in the car, we sing hymns uh, just throughout the whole van ride, which was really nice. And we had talented musicians with us, which can play on piano and guitar. And they used both of those to glorify God, which was really nice. Uh, Lindsay and I had really good conversations, which I enjoyed. And Philip made us think for hours on end with his questions and his uh, stories. Just ask him about his forest waterfall metaphor. That went well. So as you know, this trip was a de designated work trip and we all knew that when signing and uh, signing up for the trip. So we heard that we'd be doing things like building retaining wall or getting the rocks for it, painting, just jobs like that. Well, since I was injured Wednesday morning, that was before we got to the camp. It was, I think, four and a half hours before getting there. So I knew then I wouldn't actually be able to help with any of that physical stuff. Like my arm just couldn't do it. And that was really hard. <laughs> Because I can't stand to be the person that sits around watching everyone else do the work that you had told them you would help with. You had signed up and done everything and let them know that you would help them. I felt like it was kind of pointless I was there at that point because I had agreed to go on a work trip, but because of a simple accident, I couldn't work. So what was the point of being there? Uh, but what I needed to realize and realize later on was that God still allowed me to be on the trip for a reason, even though I don't know why. He has allowed me to get injured as it was part of his perfect plan. So I spent most of the mornings working alongside Rachel, who he mentioned earlier, and Becca, which was in the picture with me. We were deep cleaning an office or the gift shop and taking inventory on all the stuff there. Uh, Rachel also let me help with the meals and bring snacks to them as they were hard at work on the rocks. So one day we had cookies, which I think was everyone's favorite. Um, I would hear them singing and encouraging one another, which was in turn encouraging to me just to know that they were helping each other and praising God while doing it, panting even, but they were just saying kind words to each other and singing and doing everything to the glory of God. During the evenings, I would work by myself and clean the upstairs lodge rooms. There were two, like a coffee shop and then their boardroom, and I would just clean those. It was lonely, but it also gave me plenty of time to reflect on God and what he promises to his children. When it became hard, I prayed for strength to get me through it. And actually within a minute, my mom t uh, messaged me, giving me encouragement to continue going. So that was really nice. Like I had prayed to God and immediately he answered his prayer. Um, I also prayed for his peace and comfort of knowing that I was right where he wanted me to do me to be and reminded myself that he'll never leave me through trials and I definitely felt his presence there with me. And in the van rides as mentioned earlier we were singing hymns. One of the ones that we sang was I am with you. The words are these. I am with you says the savior even to the ages end never leaving nor forsaking I'm your ever present friend. 
Fear not, loved one, hear my comfort. None can pluck you from my hand. Trust me, loved one, I am constant. None can change what I have planned. So I just found this song to be a really good encouragement to me and a reminder to me throughout the whole week, just solidifying who God is. And now I don't know why the Lord allowed me to get injured, but I was able to recognize and experience at least two of the benefits from it. God used me, God used my getting injured to help me grow deeper in reliance and trust upon him and to teach me how to be joyful in trials, just praising him. So yeah, thank you. Hi, my name's Esther. Originally, I was just going to write three points down and wing it, but then I realized it probably wasn't a good idea, so I wrote something down. <laughs> anyway, so right before we left for missions trip, I wasn't exactly sure that I wanted to go. The month before had been really busy because of camp, tons of events, an unexpected funeral, and just life in general. I hadn't been spending a ton of time with my family, and I was really just having a hard time. As I started the missions trip, I was mostly excited, but still unsure whether I actually wanted to be there. The first day was great, even with the hiccups along the way, and I loved every second second of it, but I felt that something was off. I was having tons of fun, yet I felt that my heart wasn't right with the Lord. The second day was just as great as the first, but when we got to the college, I was feeling depressed and didn't really know why. We were having all of these spiritual conversations, and the day had been great, but I still felt discouraged. I started a conversation with one of the members of our missions team, and I just poured out what I was feeling. I wasn't quite sure up until that moment what I was feeling and why I felt like something was wrong. As I began to share my thoughts with this person, I realized that my focus was on the wrong thing. My focus was on me and what I wanted. Um, I wanted to hang out with my friends and just have a good time. I wanted to make sure that I didn't lose or miss out on anything that I thought was important. As I continued to talk to the person, I also realized that I needed to surrender my whole entire life to Christ. I'm not saying that I wasn't saved before this, but I just realized that there were things I was holding back from God. I was choosing what I wanted him to have control over but I was holding back on things that I didn't want to lose. I wanted to surrender my life to him in certain areas of my life, but in other areas, I wanted to hold back and work through it on my own. That night, I recognized that I had to give everything to the Lord, all my wants, desires, thoughts, feelings, everything. After that night, the missions trip kind of just completely changed for me. I still struggled with only thinking of myself and what I wanted, and I still wrestled with giving the Lord everything I had, but he completely changed my perspective. I wanted to be there. I wanted to serve, and my focus was on others and not so much on myself. Throughout the rest of the week, Christ showed me things I needed to change and work on. My whole perspective had shifted. When I got home, I realized that I couldn't continue the way that I had lived before. I prayed about certain things that God wanted me to change in my life, and he answered. I was looking at the entertainment that I surrounded myself with, and I recognized that not all of it was edifying. I had to get rid of some things and put my focus on the Lord and on others. God also put his finger on how I can be selfish a lot of the time. I only think about myself and how I can have a good time instead of focusing on how I can love others and share Christ with them. Um, there are many things God showed me this week and last week. He's continually been helping me and guiding me back to him. It's just been really amazing to see him at work. And even though I still mess up, I still fail, I still fall, but I know that he's there and he's working in me to do his will. And I'll end with this. Um, just this verse, Ephesians 4, 22 through 24, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Hi, I'm Lindsay. I first decided to join the mission team thinking that there was no way I could get in. I thank God for leading me to find this church and the community. My home church is actually a different church and I was in my Detroit city by a member of the missions team, Morgan. <laughs> I remember the first mission team meeting when we were told by Pastor Stemmen that the mission team started at that very moment. We did devotions every day and memorized the Bible chapter Ephesians 4. And at the time, I really wasn't used to doing either one. I had always been in a state of mind where I knew my relationship with God wasn't where it was supposed to be, but I figured I would change it all later on. So I kept procrastinating on like deepening my relationship with God. But when I got home, I realized that the trip had truly grown me closer to him. I started reading my Bible more and finding a true fascination in the word instead of just reading it because I'm forced to. 
I started reading Micah and I noticed the beautiful description that it has. I also started reading Hosea because one of the members of the mission team, Philip, recommended that I read it. And it's truly beautiful in the sense that shows love in a way that is full of grace. When memorizing Ephesians 4 for mission team, a part that stood out to me was speaking the truth in love. This phrase was repeated throughout the week in Arizona in discussions and just things that I was thinking about. I've always been confused as to how we Christians are perceived in like the media as people who are judgmental and entitled. I remember learning that speaking the truth in love has two parts in it. We have to speak the truth and not drift away from what God says is right, just so we can seem normal in the eyes of the world. We have to hold tight to our faith. But we also have to do all that in love, which is something that I can sometimes lack towards non-believers. Instead of judging them, I should pray for them and ask God to change their hearts, for only he can do that. Something that I constantly saw throughout the week in Arizona was people being joyful despite the circumstances. There was Matthew, who had the job of digging rocks out of the ground. And it was a very exhausting job, but he was still able to do the work with a smile on his face, making jokes. Morgan's arm was hurt, but she was never angry at anyone. And there were literally pictures of her smiling in the hospital. And throughout the week, she was still helping others. During one of the days, she and I were also able to have some meaningful conversations too. And on the day when we were at the Grand Canyon, I got to sit with a man named Scott and his wife in a car for many hours. And I learned so much about him because he had so many stories to share. His wife was in a wheelchair and he did so much to take care of her. I thank God so much for the joy that he has given us sinners. There were some trials throughout the week that were unexpected, but I wrote this last part of my devotion, how grateful we are that every trial is a blessing. Thank you. Hi, I'm Brooklyn, and I was thinking a lot about what I wanted to share from the missions trip. God worked in me a lot, um, especially in like areas that I really didn't think I needed work in or didn't need help in, um, but I still wasn't entirely sure what to share. So I started looking through like my devotional journaling from the past couple weeks leading up to the mission trip, but I also started looking to my journal from last year's mission trip that I had also gone on. Um, as I was looking through last year's, I remembered what the Lord had worked on me. Worked. Anyways. Um, last week I went, sorry, last year I went into the trip with the mindset of like, I want the Lord to change me. I want him to change the bad parts of me to be better. But then I quickly realized that it really needs to start in my heart. I need to be praying each day and asking him for like how I should grow and what I should change. And this year, um, I went into it with a much different mindset. I kind of went into it not wanting to change um, and just wanting me to like say how I was and to have like my plans for the week and not God's plans. I wanted to, the trip to go as I wanted it with like no setbacks at all. Very quickly, the Lord showed me that my plans are not always or ever the best. Um, from day one, things started not to go according to my plan. We started driving, the tire blew out. We're stuck on the side of the road um, it's really hot. We're all tired. We just want to be in the car on our way, but we were just stranded there. And then the car wouldn't start. So we had to get it jump started. And then we're hours behind. And then two days later, Morgan gets injured. We have to go to the ER. She needs stitches in her knee. Her arm is really hurt. So that whole day was, didn't go according to plan either. So just every single day seemed to just be like falling behind and nothing was going the way that I'd planned that we had planned or the way we'd wanted it to. And everything seemed to just fall apart. So Thursday morning, I was just praying a lot about like, why is the week going this way? And God really laid it on my heart that um, maybe it wasn't going according to my plan, but it was going according to his plan. He knew that all of those events would occur and exactly when they would occur. And it just made me think about how the whole week I'd been trying my best to control everything and have it my way when instead I should have been putting all of my plans is his, in his hands and trusting that his way is the best way. So even though the week didn't go as I had planned, the Lord really showed me that I need to trust him with my entire life and all of my plans. Because although I may think that I have it worked out and that it'll work out the right way, it's usually not the best way.
Hi, I'm Isabel, and I got the opportunity to go on this year's mission trip. God has taught me a lot of things this past week, but I'll just mention a couple of them. One of the biggest things that I've learned is just the importance of prayer. One of the mornings, I remember just feeling tired from work the days before and not really wanting to continue moving rocks or cleaning more showers. But that morning in our devotions, we read about just asking God for strength and after praying, asking God for strength for the day and to work with a joyful spirit. I really felt this change in how I felt, really feeling ready to work and really, really thankful for the opportunity to serve God through the work. Um, and that really reminded me that I just needed to start every day with prayer and with God, because only with God can I be a light to others I know and that don't know God. Um, something else I learned was just how important it is to work and praise God with other believers. Some verses that really stood out to me were Ephesians 6, 6 through 7. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. With good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Um, even while living, lifting heavy rocks and maybe getting tired, I remember just seeing even the old people continuing to lift heavy rocks, smiling and singing praises to God, which was just such a good reminder that the work we were doing was all for the glory of God and not to man. And I'm just so thankful for the opportunity I had to go on this year's mission trip and just the impact working and serving with other believers has been creating deeper relationships with everyone who went. Well, it is always a privilege um, to go on the mission trip every year. It really is a highlight of our year. Um, and it's always a blessing that either one of our parents come into town to watch the boys. We know they're well cared for. And it really gives us the freedom just to enjoy being with the teens. And especially for me, just getting time to spend with the girls is something that I don't take for granted. Uh, we have a lot of sweet fellowship and it's not quite as crazy as it is with the boys. I can hear the boy. We could hear the boys on the other side of the wall. And ours was definitely a lot calmer, which I appreciated. I thanked them many times for that, for being them. Um, one of the verses from, or a couple of the verses from Ephesians 4 that really stood out to me on this trip. Um, speaking of Christ, um, verses 16 and 17, talking about him as the head from which the whole body joined and, and held together by every joint with which it is equipped when each part is working properly makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love and I really saw that this time it was a different mission trip than we've really done in the past and yet it was such a sweet time um, to be working all together for a common goal and I really saw this body of Christ building itself up together in love and uh, while we were lifting heavy rocks and thinking, thinking through the question, how can we do this, this heavy work that can be really exhausting? How can we do this for the Lord? And what would make it different than just get, getting out here and getting the job done? And the, the ideas that they came up with and the things we were able to put into practice, praying and singing and encouraging one another, it was really special. And then going in and working in the cabins and each one of us had our little job that we were doing, and yet we were doing it together and talking and fellowshipping, and what a special time it was. And I'm excited now at that as we're back, that doesn't have to stop here. We're still part of this body of believers, and a lot of times I want to just get the job done by myself. And I was really convicted with this trip that it's not just about me getting it done. It's about the body working together. So what a special way to learn that with these teenagers and be able to come back together and work together and build each other build each other up in love. Hi, I'm Josiah. I'm the guy making that weird face in that one photo. Anyway, on this trip, well, the one of the one important lesson I learned was the importance of prayer. Before I didn't really understand the real importance, uh, the real purpose of prayer. I just go through the motions, like do it when it's right, do it when meals, do it before you go to bed, do it when you need help in certain situations. But throughout this summer and this trip, God has shown me how much prayer is a real necessity. In this trip in particular, there was many great ex experiences. I don't think I've laughed so much in the summer until this previous week. 
but there are other stuff that plagued us like tiredness and certain situations that just constantly like bogged down your mind and made you feel like you were swamped and everything in these highs and lows though god gave me peace and strength first peter 5 7 first peter 5 7 says cast all your anxiety on him for he cares for you you see in the midst of all these problems god was there he was in control not me but he was in control I couldn't control any of these events. All I could do was give them to God. And believe me, there's something powerful about when you give all your burdens, all your problems to the all-powerful, all-knowing God. It just fills you with a sense of peace. Knowing that God is in control no matter what life throws at you is the real reassurance, is the most confidence you can have. Spending time with God in prayer is invaluable. That's what, that's what I've learned this summer. It's easy to let our lives get super busy and to neglect all the things I'll neglect our time with talking with God. Like we can go do our devos, do our, uh, read a couple of chapters, but we're not really spending time with God. However, when we do spend time with God, or however, when we do that, when we neglect it, it's really easy to become reliant on our own strength and our own abilities. And believe me, our ability is faulty. We have no strength. We need to give God everything. He, we need him in everything too. It's impossible to go through life without him. Whatever we do, whatever situation we're in, we must add God for strength in the midst. I'll conclude with these two verses. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your heart and minds in Christ Jesus. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Noah, and I went on the mission trip. Um, so I guess I have three things I learned. Um, they all have to do with strengthening your walk with Jesus. Um, the first thing I would say is pray. Second thing, cast your cares upon him. And three, fellowship with other believers. Um, I mean, I was doing my devotions one day at up at the camp, we had a little quiet time for like 30 minutes. And um, it said, what can you do to strengthen your prayer life? And, you know, I kind of thought, I don't really have a strong prayer life right now. I mean, I need to just actually pray is what I need to do. Um, so yeah, and also with praying, I need to cast all my cares upon Jesus. Because um, I am weak. Jesus is powerful. I am weaker than Satan. I, by myself, cannot defeat anything Satan um, attacks me with. Um, yeah, and what's my third? Oh, yeah, fellowship with other believers. Um, it was just good to get away for a week, you know, with people who truly loved God, not just people who say they're Christians, but people who want to talk about God, want to follow God, so want to walk with God in every way that they can. And, you know, we all struggle. And, but I just think it was good to have those deep conversations. Even Philip's coming. <laughs> Philip brought up a lot of deep topics. And, um, you know, a lot of them had to do with, like, encouraging others. Like, say one thing encouraging. And it was just, it was good to think about how other people have encouraged us in a godly way. Um, so, yeah, those are my three things, and I guess I'll end there. Hi, my name's Othniel, but I go by OJ. Um, so I have today three things that I learned, and I'm going to share with you. My first point is put all your trust in the Lord. I learned how I need to look to the Lord for my strength and encouragement, not in myself or things of the world. Proverbs 3, 5 through 7 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understandings. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Do not be wise in your own eyes. <laughs> Fear the Lord for fear the Lord and depart from evil.
And so this verse like really applied to my life because like during the mission trip, because a lot of the times I would be leaning on my own understanding of things and like be thinking I'm wise in my own eyes. But like that would never work out for me. And I would always like end up somewhere where I didn't want to be. And like I only came to like know that once I came to the Lord and like humbled myself and prayed and asked him for his ways and he directed my path and gave me the right attitudes and my second point is christian fellowship i learned how important it is to have a good have have good christian friends that can encourage me when i'm going in the right direction and that can rebuke me when i fall proverbs 27 5 through 6 open rebuke is better than secret love faithful are the wounds of a friend but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. And I really enjoyed like working as a team, like all the time, because we all stayed as a group in everything we did most of the times. And like lifting the rocks, everyone was encouraging each other, like, good job, OJ, like, keep going, like, good job doing this. So like, I was really encouraged by that. And then times where I had to be rebuked or like, I'm in the cabin fooling around and past them and like, this is not edifying, like, come on, like, don't say this, and so I, but I appreciate that, and, like, everything has, like, helped me, like, stay on track and stay focused, but, yeah, and my last point is the power and importance of prayer. I wrote, keeping your prayer keeps our focus on God, and I feel like if we didn't pray as much as we did on this trip, like, it could have gone way worse, because a lot of the times we would just see that like we couldn't do anything and it was in God's arms and we had to just like stop what we were doing and pray as a group and just like all ask him for like guidance and wisdom and like help and so like just praying all the time was like really powerful and just hearing people's prayers was really encouraging. So I want to thank Tri-City and the youth group for this opportunity to go to Grandview and serve. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I get the honor of going last, which is both nice because I get to hear my brothers and sisters in Christ learned, but it's it's also nice because I get to jot down a few things to add to what I was going to say. <laughs> Unlike Esther, I wasn't as wise to type out my entire speech, so in it, I'm not winging this per se, but it's it's definitely off the cuff. Um, <laughs> to begin, I would like to thank Tri City Baptist Church for um, having a youth group. I would like to thank Pastor and Mrs. Stedman for taking the time to really just focus on their teams and really pour God's love into us and just teach us what it means to be a pastor and a pastor's wife. And Mr. and Mr. So Whiteley, I don't know if they're here, but I would like to thank them for their, um, they are back there. <laughs> I would like to thank them just for their patience with us. They were up in the front and sometimes I was like, I wonder if they can hear all the, the noise back here, but they were, they were very patient with us, very kind the entire week and um, just, everybody was an encouragement. This week was such a blessing to me. Um, this morning, as I was thinking, I, I had I had some things that I wrote down throughout the week as they came to mind. I was like, what did I learn? What did God teach me? What can I share with others to encourage them? And as I was finding these points or the points were coming to me as I was having these memories and I was like, Hey, there, this is something that was this, this is something that's worth sharing. Something I noticed is that they were all from Ephesians chapter four, which was the passage we had memorized the entire summer. So God had actually been teaching us. We had been working on His word and memorizing His word, and then we get to have the application, the experience of just well, it's like what God is doing and what He's been telling us. So I have. Um, four things I would like to share with you, and then I will kind of sum it all up and introduce our song that we're going to sing. Um, the first is um, the unity we have is 
in Christ alone. This was just, it's, it, it's always an experience to go on a missions trip. There's always kind of, um, as some people call it, a spiritual high. It's kind of like a camp where you go there and you're like, everybody's here. Everybody wants to learn about God. They want to encourage others. But really the only reason that's possible, the only reason we have unity at, on missions trip or at church or in youth group is because of our savior and because of our God. And the verse that um, applied to this was Ephesians 4, 4. It says, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. And the, it, was, it was exciting to see the principles that I knew God was teaching me just jump out to me in the scripture I had memorized. It, 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 was, it was such a blessing. And also something I would like to mention is we, we had really long drives and just being able to sit with a group of people is not something, well, for 15 hours, it's not something you get to do every day. And um, I would just like to thank the youth group for being such an encouragement to me um, in, in the singing and our conversations we were able to have and just building up one another. There was, there was a unity. There was a unity because of our God, because there is one God. Uh, my second point is God wants his body, which is believers, the church, to use the gifts they were given to work together and build up one another. This week, it was a week of challenges. As Morgan highlighted, she was challenged. I think a lot of the teams highlighted an area where the Lord was working on and the Lord um, just put in their spirit and said, hey, you need to improve on something. And I would, I would definitely say we were able to not cope with that, but we were able to overcome that by building up one another. This is Ephesians 4.16. It says, from whom the whole body joint and knit together by what every joint supplieth, according to the effective working by which every joint does its, does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. It was a real encouragement this week to just experience just Christian fellowship and Christian edification, just as, as um, a lot of the teams mentioned, there would be times where people would walk up to me and be like, hey, thank you for doing this. Thank you for sharing this, Philip. And that that would give me the energy that would give me the, um, as it talks about what every joint supplieth, we, we build on one another. And then in the end, it's like a, a picture of just this entire body working together and edifying each other in love and growing. And that was really a blessing to experience and see this week. Um, my third point is all things can be done unto the Lord and for the sake of his name. I have a uh, kind of a picture, a little doodle beside this, that's a rocks, because this, I think, really drives my point home. When we were, we were lifting rocks, there was a hillside, and we would slowly bring our truck up, and we would kind of clear one section with pickaxes and load them in, move to the next, and it was, it was very hard work, even for me, and I've, I've lifted heavy rocks before, but it's like at 8,000 feet, it's a, it's a different fill, it's, it's a different kind of load on your body, but Pastor Stedman, he, he really took, he stood up and he led in a way that I, I had never experienced before. He said, why don't we sing while we're lifting rocks? And I was like, where did that come from? But <laughs> once we started, it was such a blessing. It, it took your mind from the work that you were doing. And it reminded you of the work that God has done and God is doing. And that was really a blessing to just experience. It's like you're laboring intensely with one another but at the same time you're you're worshiping your god you're worshiping your savior and so it was just it, as as they were saying is sometimes i would be lifting and you couldn't sing for a minute you would miss a verse because you're like ah, i need a breath but it's like people would just jump in a song as somebody walked by them and start another one in a different side of the mount hillside and it, and it was beautiful and i know it was honoring to the lord the first point is um Conversation should always be good and should always impart grace to the hearers. And the verse that popped out to me was Ephesians 4.29. It says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth for what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. One of the biggest takeaways, like one of the biggest impact this week was the people. It was the, the teens of Tri-City Baptist Church. I can if you come after me afterwards, I can probably give you a name of a car or a name. And then a conversation I had that encouraged me a conversation I had that I was like, wow, thank you God for allowing these people to come. Thank you for allowing these people to be here. 
And so this, this conversation, this idea of speaking what is good, it's, it comes into my final point. And I forgot to read you my introduction verse, which it will make sense at the end. My, the verse I wanted to start with was Ephesians 2.10. It says, for we are his workmanship created in God, or you know, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. This trip was about work. This was about a work that God had planned, a work that God had set aside for the Tri-City Youth Group to do. He, it was only through him we were able to get there, but he provided the opportunity to serve him and glorify him. And this, this is kind of how I would like to close. Matthew 5, 14 and 16 says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it, give li it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. The purpose of this entire mission trip was to glorify God. And as I, I have seen God work and in everybody's life, as I have heard the testimonies, even from Joel and Matt and Rachel and Matthew, it's, it's like, wow, God was glorified. God used the, the little that we were able to accomplish that week to glorify his name so that he might be worshiped. And that's just a privilege to be able to be used by God and to serve him. And I would like to give you kind of two, two quotes. So the, the first one is the light always speaks of its source and this one was given to me by another pastor but it, it stuck with me because it's true e even if you screw in a light bulb when it turns on the light in the corner is, is comes from the light in the center and that's when you look you're like where's that light coming from you look towards its source and so this week we were able and this ties into the principle of work we were able to do a good work because of our good god we were able to do something good something of profit something of value because it speaks of our source, it speaks of our good God. And that's how I would like to introduce our song, which has really been a theme of this mission trip is not only, it was a mission trip of trials. Yes, it was a mission trip of hardships and carrying boulders literally and figuratively, but it was also a mission trip of just experiencing God's goodness. So I would like to invite the youth group and we'll come sing. The song we're singing is, um, You Are Always Good.
just close with a few short comments and I'll ask pastor to come and close us in prayer. This really, this trip was an answer to prayer. Um, you know, there's some things that I'm very thankful to be back with my, my children and, you know, back in normal life. And yet the blessing of the Christian fellowship to be together serving the Lord, there were just times where you just, it, you know, like I will, I miss those times. Uh, we had one of the best times around the campfire Sunday night. They didn't have a Sunday night service at that church. And so we were there in the morning and we went to the, um, we did a hike in the petrified forest in the afternoon and came back and we had a campfire time and just the joy of talking about, okay, what is God teaching us? What would it look like if our entire youth group was living this way? And, you know, what things need to change in order for that to happen? And, you know, the, the principle from Ephesians 4 that many people mentioned of speaking the truth in love. Um, we need to be talking to one another about the Lord. Scripture says there that he gives leaders to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry, and that work of the ministry is to speak the truth in love so that we may all grow up into him who is the head, Christ. Who are you speaking to in love and giving God's word to? How are you, how am I encouraging another believer in our congregation that we might be built up in the faith and mature in Christ-likeness? That really was one of the big things that we that was the theme of that chapter and that and we continue to think about. So I want to ask you to pray for our youth group. Um, pray that God would do a work revival. I think he is doing a work in our youth group. But um, and we you go on, you have this time and what a what a special thing it was um, for us to be able to come apart for a while. And, and spend this time, you know, everyone else is going to normal work and, and preparing to go back to school and doing all the things that we do in normal life. And we had this special opportunity. Um, but I was finishing up. One of the requirements we had was to read this booklet, Your Reactions Are Showing. I had read it a long time ago as a child. And the teens had read it. And I told them I'm going to finish it by Sunday. And I was reading it this afternoon, and it was talking about how um, Joseph is down in Egypt. He's gone through the hardship of being sold as a slave, and he's walking with God, and God is blessing him. And then Potiphar's wife cast her eyes on Joseph. Sometimes after a great victory or a good time, Satan is at work to try to undermine that. You think of Elijah on Mount Carmel. Right? He's on top of the mountain. People are finally turning back to God, and he's threatened, and he runs. You think of Daniel. Daniel is exalted. As, and these are examples that were given. Daniel is exalted to be one of the presidents, and then he's thrown in the lion's den. And, you know, you think about these different things, it would be very easy for us. We can't just live in the past. We should praise God and, and tell the church what things God has done, but we need to walk with God today. We need to move forward with God today, and that means being on our guard because Satan hates anything that God does for his glory. So if you just pray for our youth group, pray that God would continue to do that work, not just in Arizona on a trip, but here in Colorado as we go back to school, that we would be continuing to speak to one another in love, encouraging one another, building up one another, that God, we would see people saved in our youth group, that God would truly do a work of reviving us, that we would be closer to him than we've ever been before for his glory. Okay, Pastor. Well, amen. Thank you. Uh, our team group, that was fantastic tonight. I, I think I speak for all of us, uh, all the adults and families that are here. Uh, that was quite a blessing. Very encouraging. Uh, gives us a lot of hope to see what God is doing in the next generation. Uh, thank you, Stedmans. Thank you, Whitelace, for your taking time out for your week and uh, using your vacation time to serve our teens and church. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll pray for us. Uh, I do think of the passage is rejoice uh, in your youth. Rejoice, in the Lord, in your youth. You, you were doing that. You were remembering your creator in your youth. And the only thing that will destroy the special fellowship and friendships that you have 
is is pride it's it's selfishness it's sin and uh, we need to pray that you guys will continue to cultivate this uh, fellowship that you have and uh, the, the lord jesus talked about how his disciples his followers would be known by their love and uh, you have something here that is a it's really a gift from god it's a treasure and i'm just thinking as a, an outsider to your youth group as a putting kind of projecting myself back as a teen and thinking of our church family here if this was let's say you were a teen and you ran across this youth group what would what would that how would that impact you you know, i would have been very curious as a teenager i went to school with 600 in my class uh, i only knew one christian one and then we moved my senior year to a class of 92 there was none zero so um you know, you have something that's wholesome, it's godly, it's pure, and very special. And uh, there's fellow teens all around this front range that uh, they don't have Christ as their Savior. They need the Lord so badly. And here you have the Lord. You have something that's really beautiful. And only sin will, will rob it. And so uh, you're off to a great start. The school year is right now. Uh, you need to continue to pray together. You need to be daily in the Word. And uh, this is a great time to have an impact on the other members of the youth group. And then uh, to win the win fellow teens, uh, you're in the best position to do it. So uh, we'll pray for you. Thanks for the testimonies. They were really, really, really good. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's pray here tonight. Heavenly Father, thank you for these testimonies. It's just so encouraging. Um, what a treasure uh, to, to have young people that have been saved by grace, your grace, who have had some parents and a church and youth leaders that have invested and have, uh, as parents especially, these arrows in the hands of a mighty man, how they've pointed them, their children, to you. And we pray that they would go straight uh, to the heart of God, that they would run true and serve you well. And Lord, the uh, sweet fellowship that they've described and enjoyed and memories that they'll always have uh, we know that only sin will rob them of these blessings. So, Lord, help them to guard their hearts. Help us all to guard our hearts. For out of our hearts, we know, come the issues of life. And so, Lord, protect our teens, protect our youth group. We know that if they live godly for you, that they will be persecuted. There will be folks who make fun of them, look down at them, but in reality are just terribly jealous of what, they, what they're seeing. So, Lord, uh, bless this uh, group. Uh, as we go into the school year and these days ahead, uh, that we would have a one eye uh, to fellowship and inreach, but the other eye to outreach and to see who we can win to you. And that we pray that we have a great fall semester. Thank you for this evening. Thank you for this good Lord's Day. Bless us as we go home now. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed.